move it. I've listened to that band quite a bit. They're called Wren Collective, and I believe that they are anointed. If you listen to some of their music, you can just tell that God is on them. Even if it's not your style of music, I believe that God is using those guys. That's yeah. yeah no, I, I, I can't understand, but okay. All right. How y'all doing tonight? Doing, doing pretty good. Okay. Well, good. Thankfully, that all those big rains they said were coming kind of just <laughs> shot on through, didn't it? Well, uh, yeah. We were close. <laughs> right. They were acting like it at first. They were acting like we could get up to thirty inches, and I, I was like, "Well, there you go." But then it kind of kept dropping and dropping. I was like, okay, you know. Sounds better and better. Yes, exactly. I woke up two or three times and it was falling down right last night. Right. Uh-oh. Yeah, I mean, it got it there for a while. Mm-hmm. But it didn't do it back. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We well, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so very much. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you that although we are few in this building, Father, we we are thankful that you are with us. We're thankful that we can gather together in peace and in harmony and in love and in comfort. We appreciate all these things. And Father, we ask that you please speak to us tonight. Father, give us some words of wisdom through your word. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Can y'all hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. Tonight we're going to be talking about guarding your minds. Your minds. All right? In my Christian walk, I have realized that the devil likes to fight me in my mind more than anything else. I don't know if you can attest to that in your own selves, but he hits me here pretty frequently. And it's a variety of types of attacks, right? I mean, there are so many different varying ways that he attacks us in our minds. Sometimes it's just doubt. Sometimes it's just uh, a fleeting evil thought, right? We didn't want that thought, but it came nonetheless, right? And he will do that. The devil will whisper, or his minions will whisper in our ears evil things, and we'll sometimes think that that's us thinking that. But he's trying to get us to think that way. He's trying to get us to buy into what he's selling. But you don't have to, folks. You don't have to buy into what he's selling. You can reject it as it's trying to come in. It's only when we entertain the thought that it can take root, right? So we have to stop it there. Stop it before it can take root. Anybody ever grown a garden before? Boom, 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 boom. Good. That makes it a whole lot easier. Have, while you are growing your garden, ever noticed weeds? Those little suckers pop up everywhere. No matter even if you spray, pull, whatever, they just keep coming, don't they? Weeds are persistent. The devil likes to sow weeds in our mind in the same way. God's trying to plant a beautiful garden. He's trying to plant a beautiful garden in our minds to where we think lovely things, to where our thoughts are of value, right? To where our thoughts are godly, but then here comes the devil throwing the weeds in, trying to destroy what God is creating. And that's all he can ever do. The devil can't create himself. He can only destroy or manipulate or twist what God has already done or is doing, right? So let's learn how to put uh, protection over our mind because it is the greatest battlefield. It is the greatest place that the devil will come and attack us. And thankfully, God knew that beforehand and gave us some protection. So if y'all want to go to Ephesians 6, 17... And if y'all want to continue reading in this chapter, it talks about a lot of other pieces of armor as well. But we're going to just highlight the one tonight. 
So that's Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So it talks about the Word of God there too as our sword. That's how we fight back against the devil. But let's focus on that helmet for a minute. The helmet of salvation, protection over our minds, all right? One of the ways the devil likes to attack us in our mind is trying to get us to doubt that we're saved in the first place. Has anybody anybody ever felt that way before? Am I really saved? Right? Have you ever thought that in your mind? I know I have. I know that in my beginning stages as a Christian, the devil hit me with that more than anything else just to try to get me to doubt that I'm even saved in the first place. Because what happens is, if you think you're an unsaved individual, you're going to live like an unsaved individual. I guarantee you. If you think I don't have salvation, then you will continue to act that way. But if you do have salvation, and you know it in your mind, you will start to see the progress of you living a saved life. And so that's why he tempts us with that. That's why he tries to sow that weed in our mind. Because if it can take root and wrap itself around the good plants of salvation, then he can choke that out of us. And we will start to live like he wants us to instead of God. So, one thing that you need to remember is that you are saved. If you have made Jesus your Lord, and you try your best to obey His commands, that means you really love Him. That's a proof right there that you are a saved individual. So then you have to say, no, Satan, no, devil. I don't believe your lies because that's all he can do is lie to you. You're not saved. Why would God want you? That's another thing that He will hit us in our minds. He starts to make us question. Well, He will say all the things that you've ever done wrong in your life. He will say, don't you remember what you did? Why would God want you? He will start to make you have insecurities. You ever felt that way? Insecure about things, right? We start to feel insecure in ourselves. Well, maybe God doesn't want me. And then you continue a lifestyle of sin. God does want you. He proved it so much so that He sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross very similar to this. Now, God didn't have to die, but He wanted to because He loves you. Now, that proves to me that God cares about me because in my sinfulness, while I was still sinning, He died for me. I know that's hard to understand, but that's what the Bible says. That even while we were still sinning, He died for us. Even in the midst of our own sin, He died for our sin. Because He loves you so much. So that must mean He must care an awful lot about me if He wants to die for me. So then with that knowledge, I want to make sure if He's going to die for me, then I want to live for Him. Right? I'm going to take that responsibility on myself and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to live for Him. He cared enough about me. I'm going to care enough about Him and prove to Him I love Him. So I'm going to live for Him. And in that, it also helps prove that you're saved as well. That's a good thing. But how do you fight back? You fight back with the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Okay, So you have to use Scripture to fight the devil. You can't cuss him out as much as some of us might have wanted to in our lives. You can't cuss him out. That don't work. That just plays into his game. You can't play by his rules, right? That's not going to do anything good for you. You have to hit him with what works. And what works is the Word of God. Also, believe it or not, praise music. When you start feeling like the devil's attacking, you start praising out loud. He will run. Ooh, he don't like that. He does not like that. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That name has power. They tremble at the name of Jesus. Isn't that good? You want to make the devil tremble, you use the name of Jesus. Right? Something that I have to do is remind myself this often. All right? This is 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, sorry. 
1 Corinthians 2 and then verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2 and then verse 16. And just a quick uh, study help. If you're writing these things down instead of writing out Corinthians, you might want to just do C-O-R period. Shorthand. Make it easier on yourself, right? Or if we're going to go to Matthew, then it'll be M-A-T-T -T dot, right, period. That way you don't have to write out the whole thing. All right, so 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ? Now that's something very special right there. Something I have to remind myself often is I have the mind of Christ, so I don't need to think that thought. Right? So if an evil thought comes in, I say, no, I have the mind of Christ. I'm not going to think like the devil. I'm going to think like Christ. Right? So the devil's trying to tempt you to think an evil thought about your brother or sister in Christ. You rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus and say, no, I have the mind of Christ. Right? And in doing this, you might have to do it a hundred times a day. <laughs> I know in myself I have to say things over and over and over sometimes just to get those thoughts out because he will hit me with a variety of different things. So I have to say, no, I have the mind of Christ and I will have the mind of Christ, all right? So that might help you in defeating the devil in your mind. That might help guard your mind from those evil thoughts like it does me. So... I hope that will be an extra help to you as a reminder that you might have to speak these things over and over, right? Because if the devil's going to hit me over and over, over and over, then I might have to use something over and over to fight back. Listen to this. This is a quote from Aristotle. That guy, he lived a long time ago, right? Long time. If one listens to the wrong kind of music, he will become the wrong kind of person. Now this guy, he lived a long time ago, way before we had all our different genres that we have today, but there's so much evil music out there. I don't know if y'all have been listening to the radio nowadays, but there's just a lot of things that we shouldn't be listening to. But that's what he says. If one listens to the wrong kind of music, he will become the wrong kind of person. Why? What do you think? Why do you think you will become the wrong kind of person just because of what you listen to? Because of what the enemy is telling me to do. Exactly. It's speaking into you, and you're absorbing it if you like it. Right? If you keep listening to evil music, it's going to corrupt your behavior. You're going to start to do what you hear, in other words. Some of the things, not all the time, but some of the things. Let's just take, for example, anybody like country music? Okay, several hands, all right? There are certain songs that I like, but then there's other songs I know I can't listen to because they're telling me to do things that aren't right. Okay? There are country songs that tell you to go drink and get drunk. Did you know that? There are country songs that tell you to have sex outside of marriage. There are country songs that tell you to do all kinds of evil things, and although it has a good melody or beat to it or whatever you have, what have you, it has good lyrics, and you, you get your foot tapping, although it sounds good, it's not good for me to take in because it's telling me to do bad things. And you may not even have any intention on doing something bad, but after you listen to that song, you're like, hey, man, I could really go for a shot of Jack Daniels for some reason right now. And it's because they were pouring that into you and you were accepting it, right? But as a child of God, as a Christian, we need to reject that kind of stuff. And some people will say, oh, you're just being legalistic or you're just being a Pharisee. But listen to what old Aristotle had to say. He had it figured out way back then. And I can almost guarantee you they didn't have near as bad a music as we do nowadays. No. <laughs> right? You know? I mean, I kind of think back, well, Aristotle, I mean, what did they even have that was bad? I mean, they were listening to, like, classical music, right? I mean, what, 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 what kind of bad stuff were they listening to? But, but he still had it figured out. You know, I'm sure there's still bad stuff. But even more so, 
You know, there's a lot of stuff Miss Betty Jean mentioned. I don't like rap. Well, there's some Christian rap that's good, but there's also a lot of other bad rap out there that just is so filled with hatefulness and evil. Kill, kill people. You know, tell them you go go out and kill people. Why is there so much murder? You know, why why is there so much murder today? Because people are listening to music telling them to go murder. You know. I mean, it's, it's right there before our eyes. It's right there before our ears. So we need to be careful what we listen to. Some of y'all may, may say, I don't even listen to music. Well, that's good. Sometimes you probably don't need to. But we need to be careful what we listen to. When I first became a Christian, that was one of the things that I had to get right. Because I knew that there was certain music that I listened to that I shouldn't. So I had to just cut it out completely and go to a completely different Mainly, I only listen to Christian music now. Mainly. You can't really go wrong. You know, sometimes you can, but for the most part, you can't go wrong listening to Christian music because it's feeding your soul, right? It's feeding your spirit. And that's feeding my mind, too. It's helping me to think about positive things and good things to help me to grow in the Lord. And that's what's going to help your garden to grow good, right? But if you're steadily putting weeds in there from that other evil music, it's going to start choking out some good things inside of it. So listen to old Aristotle. He knew what he was talking about. All right, now let's go to Psalm 101, verse 3. I think this is the one that we probably have more of a problem with than anything. I can get my ears in check, but this is the one that kind of gets me sometimes. Psalm 101, verse 3. Everybody got that? Psalm 101, verse 3. I always remember, Psalm is right smack dab in the middle of the Bible. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. All right, listen to that, though. I will set nothing before my eyes. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Nothing wicked. Whew. Man, but I like movies. I'm a movie buff. Anybody a movie buff? Nobody? Oh, wow. Well, I like movies. Well, okay. What about uh, TV shows? Anybody like TV shows? No? Well, All right. Well, I like certain uh, movies and certain TV shows myself. And this has becomes a struggle because nowadays, it's hardly anything worth watching. I mean, there's so many times that me and Rindy both just have to, just, we're just like, I can't watch that. That's just, uh, I can't do it, you know? Because there's just so much evil out there nowadays. The devil's trying to corrupt us. I didn't know if y'all realized that or not. He's trying to do it, and he uses music, and he uses TV or movies to do it. Oh, somebody's... Is that somebody trying to come in, boy? Oh, can you let them in there? It's your daughter. Oh, okay. Anyway, we have to be willing to do that, though. If I notice, okay, what I'm watching is not good, I need to remove that from my eyes, right? And sometimes it's going to be those good TV shows that we like and we enjoy, but there's certain things we just cannot watch, all right? Now let's go to Matthew 6. Brielle said, I really want to come to Bible study tonight and listen to you, Dad. Thank you for coming, Brill. You made us seven. The total of us in this room is seven, and that is divine completion and perfection. And God uses seven a lot. I didn't know if y'all realized that in the Bible, but He uses seven a lot. So you completed us tonight, Brill. Thank you. And of course, we always have Jesus with us. All right, that's Matthew six twenty-two through twenty-three. Everybody got that? So Matthew is the first of the New Testament. So when you flip it all the way back to the New Testament, it's going to be right at the beginning. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. 
If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Right? So he tells you right off the bat, your eyes are your light. So what are you putting before your eyes? Light. Is it good? You're putting light before your eyes? Good. Hopefully not too bright, huh, Brielle? Because then it would burn them. Right. We need to make sure that if we have our eyes looking at something, then it's going to be something that will edify us or build us up. That's what that means, edify. To build you up, to build us up, to better us, right? Because that's what we need to do. We need to be better than we were before, right? We need to continually have a mindset of I want to improve, right? I am not good enough yet, but I will continually to strive to be better and better every day, right? There's another scripture, and this one's kind of scary. The Bible actually says, now don't go doing this, Brio, that if your eyes cause you to sin, it would be better for you. Now, he's not telling you to go do it, but it would be better for you to pluck it out. If your eyes are causing you to sin, it'd be better for you to pluck it out and to come into heaven blind than it would be to come into heaven with all, um, to come into hell with all your members, right? Now, he's not trying to literally tell you to pluck it out, but he's just saying it would be better for you. <laughs> so, if your eyes are your stumbling block leading you to sin, then you need to change what your eyes are looking at. Amen? Now, you may, like I said, you may not have this problem, but there are, believe it or not, a lot of people who do. They let their eyes look at things that are not good. And then it causes them to go do evil. Ever heard the term monkey see, monkey do? Mm -hmm. Right. Kids are really like that. Kids see what you do and then they go do it. All right. So we as parents have to be careful what we do, right? Our grandparents. All right. Philippians 4. 7 through 8. Now this one I really want you to highlight in your Bibles or jot down. This one is very important, especially verse 8. All right? So that's Philippians 4, 7 through 8. All right. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. So thankfully, His peace will help guard our minds. We need His peace, right? Because there's so much craziness in the world that you can just get stressed out just by watching one 30-minute segment of the news, right? You just The anxiety just wells up inside of because there's just so much craziness that's constantly going on around us. But if we get the peace that surpasses all of our understanding, which means most people should be anxious right now, but I'm not because I have God's peace, right? So it surpasses all understanding. That will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We should thank Him alone for that. But to go a step further, He tells us what we should think about. When all this craziness in this world's going on all around us, these are the eight things that you must remember to think about. And I would encourage you to try to commit it to memory. And, and I have probably one of the worst memories in the world. All right? So no excuse. Practice on this one. Okay? Try to remember at least these eight words. All right? Whenever I read them. And a good practice of trying to commit something to memory is write it down on a piece of paper and then try to read it over and 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 over. And then test yourself. All right? Test yourself. Don't look at the paper and say, and try to say as much as you can. Okay, well, I didn't get it all. And then read it again, and then now try it again. Anybody? You have to use some old school techniques, but, you know, do whatever it works for you to try to remember this. Because I'm telling you right now, if the devil attacks you so much in your mind, you need to remember this. Okay, one of the most, in my opinion, important scriptures in the Bible, all right? Here we go. 
Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, all right, let's count them. That's one. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, not bad report, we get a lot of bad reports, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, that's eight things, he tells you to meditate on these things. So the reason why I tell you to remember this is because the next time you get a thought that doesn't line up with these eight things, you get it out of there. Don't think about it. Get it out. Because if it doesn't line up with these eight things, more than likely it's the devil trying to plant a weed inside your brain. All right? He's trying to corrupt us somehow if he's putting a thought that does not line up with these eight things. So y'all going to try to memorize that for me? Try to memorize it for God, really. Not just because I'm telling you to. It's really important because the devil's attacking us in our minds. Bro, I saw you praying there. You asking God to help you with these? Good. All right. Here's the love chapter. We call this the love chapter. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. There's a lot of things. There's a big description in this chapter that talks about how love is supposed to act, all right? So let's go. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And we're just picking up where it had already started. And it says, basically, love does not behave rudely. Okay? So if you love somebody, you don't need to be rude. Man, I get rude people all the time. And I'm like, man, are you a Christian? We don't need to be acting rude towards one another. Nevertheless, it says it does not seek its own, is not provoked, and the final one that we're highlighting tonight is thinks no evil. So if I want to be like God, the Bible says that He is love. If I want to be like Him and be like love, I'm going to try my best not to think evil, right? Don't think evil things. Like I said, there's a devil out there trying to whisper in your ear to think those evil thoughts, but it's up to you if you continue with it, right? It's up to you if you snatch hold of it and allow that to be in your garden of your mind. Do you want that weed growing in there, or do you want to get it out? Get it out. Get it out, amen, Brill? Get that weed out of there. The devil's trying to sow weeds into my garden and my mind. I'm getting them out. I'm plucking them, right? Get out of there. I'm not going to let that thought be in there because I have the mind of Christ, right? I have the mind of Christ. I will not think that way, so I will think no evil, okay? Is everybody doing okay? All right, Psalm 39, verse 1. And if it's too hard to keep flipping back and forth, don't worry about that. Jot them down on a piece of paper and look them up later. All right? Because I know sometimes it can be hard flipping from one side of the Bible all the way back to the other. My dad even told me, he said, you know, I've been doing that for a while and I just, I'm tired of it. I get so caught up in the flipping that I can't even pay attention to what you're saying. Right? So if that's, if you're having problems with that, don't worry so much about having to follow along as we're going. Just write it down and then you can go at your leisure and look them back up later, okay? But do whatever you want to do. If this helps you learn, do it, okay? I'm not trying to discourage you one way or the other. Just, just letting you, you don't have to do that, all right? So Psalm 39, verse 1. All right. I said, I will guard my ways. I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. All right? So even though it says while the wicked are before me, it also just implies that we should do that at all times anyway. Right? Sometimes we feel like, okay, we're not around church, folk. I can talk a different way now. Right? Be honest. You ever been that way? Uh, we, we have a little bit better uh, 
verbiage when we're in church. We're a little bit more reserved, right? But when we get around our friends or somebody that we know, you know, we kind of top it up with them when we kind of start, you know, talking the way they're talking. To be honest, you know, and if that's you, you might need to learn to put a muzzle on it because the Bible just told you to do that, right? I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, all right? I will guard my ways in all your ways, but especially with my tongue with which you speak. We had a sermon on this not too long ago. Y'all remember that? I will watch out what I'm saying because this will lead to evil thoughts as well. Which you constantly speak, if you're constantly speaking negatively or evil, you will be thinking that way, right? And then vice versa. Here's another one that goes along with that. It's about the same thing. Psalm 141 in verse 3. Brielle, I need you to be quiet over there, honey. I want you to be here, but I want you just making random noise. Psalm 141 in verse 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Alright? So, we need to be careful what we're talking, right? How we're talking. But thankfully, God, as we ask Him to, will guard us. He will protect us from speaking evil. And a lot of times when we speak evil, we're also speaking evil to those who are hearing. And we're causing them to have to hear and get that in their minds. Right? So it's not only our minds that we should be concerned about, but we should be caring about other people's minds as well. So if I'm speaking something that is evil, then who is around me that is taking that in? Who is around me that is soaking that in like a sponge? Right? Especially when you're around kids. This is an encouragement for all of us. Even if you don't have kids, we're always going to be around young ones somewhere, right? Even if it's at a grocery store. Be careful what you're speaking because that's going to get inside of them. And you're going to be held accountable for that. You will be held accountable. There's some things that God says in the Bible in protection to little ones that we, we, we should know. The Bible says that if we offend one of the least of these, and He's talking about little ones, it would be better for you to have a millstone around your neck and tossed into the sea. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want a stone weighing me down and being thrown in the sea because what's going to happen? Sink, right? And then I'm going to drown. It would be better for me for that to happen than to offend one of these little ones because God's not going to hold you guiltless in this matter. So we need to make sure that we are protective of what's coming out of our mouths, especially when we're around little ones. Especially. We should already be on guard amongst ourselves. But if there's kids in the room, whew, you better be watching what you're saying. Because what's going to happen is they're going to absorb that and then do it. They're going to absorb that and they're going to think that. Think that way. And be that way. So... You know, we have to be careful. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'm also trying to help you to be aware. Because sometimes we're just not aware. We're not aware of our surroundings. We just act like every I can do anything I want everywhere I go and say whatever I want, but that's not the case. When you become a Christian, He holds us accountable. He tells us, you be careful what you're saying. Because what you're saying is going to get into somebody. Right? Right? So if I'm going to speak, I want to let it be things that line up with that uh, Philippians 4a. If I need to watch out what I'm meditating on, I need to make help other people meditate on these things too. So that means if I'm going to speak, it needs to line up with those eight things. Right? Refer back to that. Okay, here we go. I got four more scriptures. We're going to 2 Thessalonians. That's in the New Testament. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. And if you want to do that shorthand, it would just be T-H-E-S, period. All right, Thessalonians. 
2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. We need that protection, don't we? Right? We need protection from Him because He is the one who is trying to corrupt us. So God, help me in my mind. Pray for that every day. God, help me in my mind. Help me to not think evil. Help me to not think about things that offend. Alright? And I believe that God will protect you. He will help you. Anybody need God's help tonight? We always do, right? Alright, Romans. Oh, I'm sorry. I have more than four. Forgive me. Alright, Romans 8, 5 through 6. Romans 8, 5 through 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what are you thinking about on a regular basis? Are you thinking about the things of this world more often than you are the things of God and of heaven and of His Word? Because I would rather be spiritually minded and have life and peace than to be carnally minded and dead, right? So we've got to be careful what we're consciously thinking about on a regular basis. Because whatever your mind is focused on, that's what you will become. Alright? So be careful. If you have a negative mindset and you're thinking evil all the time, that's what you're going to become. But if you have a positive mindset and you're thinking about righteous things, that's what you will become, right? You will be training yourself to think one way or the other. So we already see that spiritually minded is the best. Let's try to work on that one, right? Okay. And if we're going to do that, we have to go to this verse. Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we have to work on our renewing of our mind. To renew your mind, you have to constantly think about good things. Because there's so much evil in the world, evil's trying to get in. Right? And if you let just even one day go by without trying to renew your mind into the things of God, you will start to see a corruption take place. You will already see. So we can't even let those weeds grow even a little bit, right? When we shine that light on the darkness and say, oop, there's a weed, we have to be quick to pull it out. Because if we just allow it to stay, those roots are growing down deep. And it will be even harder to pluck that weed out later. Right? So as soon as we see something that we need to get out of there, get it out immediately. Don't just allow any sin to remain. Right? So you have to constantly be renewing. All right? Romans 12 and then verse 16. <clears throat> Be of the same mind towards one another. All right, he wants us to be in unity. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. All right? Don't be high-minded, so to speak. Don't think of yourself as, look at me, I'm so awesome. You know? You are, look at you. Because there are, sadly, there are people like that. They are... We call those uppity people, right? Have you ever heard that term? They're uppity people. You know, there's like snobs. They turn their nose. I mean, think about that. That's what he's talking about by having your mind on high things. Uh -huh. Which I don't believe anybody in this room is this way. Thank you. But you're going to interact with people that are. They think just because they got a lot of money that they're better than you, right? 
Is that the case? Does God think that way? Actually, it's the reverse, right? He says it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. So that's kind of scary. I, <laughs> do I really want that million dollars? <laughs> Not really anymore after I've heard that one, right? If you do ever inherit money like that or you ever come into money like that, make sure you use it for God and His kingdom, right? Because it's easily to get corrupted. It says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. You doesn't mean you can't have it. It just means if you love it, all right? So be careful. Nevertheless, it says, don't set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Don't be with the prideful people. Be with the humble folks. Because what's going to happen is, is you are going to be- become humble as well, right? Monkey see, monkey do. Choose your friends wisely, all right? Do not be wise in your own opinion. Some of us have different opinions about ourselves, but don't be just wise in your own opinion, all right? So this really is the last four scriptures, all right? Sorry. These are bonuses. Consider that. Bonus scriptures, good ones. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. So that's Ephesians, and if you want to do that shorthand, E-P-H. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him. Thankfully, we're all getting taught by Him tonight. Although you see, Brandon, this is not Brandon teaching you, but God through Brandon. Amen? His Word will teach you. Thank you for that, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will teach you as well. If indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus. Anybody want truth? You're going to only find it through Jesus. That you put off concerning your former conduct. We all acted a certain way before we came to Christ. And it says, The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So don't be like your old self. Be like the spiritual new man that you're supposed to be and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that means we have to be working on this. We've got to be working on our minds, right? And that you put on the new man that makes make sure that you are walking as a new creation in Christ, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So that goes back to that salvation thing. If I know that I am a saved individual, then I need to walk in righteousness and holiness because God created me to do this, right? God did not create me to live sinfully. He didn't create me to be a hellion. He didn't create me to sin. He created me to live for Him. So I'm going to do that to the best of my ability, right? I will fall short. I will mess up but I'm going to continually try not to, right? To the best of my ability. All right, this is Colossians 3.2. C-O-L period, if you want to do that shorthand. Colossians 3.2. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. The things above are God's things. Right? If I'm going to set my mind on something, if I'm going to be thinking about something, let it be the things of God. Because it's going to be things that will improve me. It will be things that help me to have a better relationship with Him. So you must set your thing, you must set your mind on the things of heaven. Amen? Alright. Two more. 1 Thessalonians 4.11 this would do us all good here. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 4.11 That you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Trying to do this, right? Try to live a quiet life. To mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. 
to mind your own business is what I want to highlight here. If I'm going to set my mind on something, let it be my own business. Not worried about what everybody else is doing, right? Let me not think about, let me not try to live like I'm going to be keeping up with the Joneses. That's an old school saying. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not going to worry about the Joneses except to pray for them, right? They got a new car, God bless them. I ain't going to be jealous. I'm not going to covet it. I'm not going to wish they had problems, right? Because I'm jealous. Because I have envy. No, I'm not going to talk about them behind their back. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to spread gossip about them. I'm going to pray for them, and then I'm going to mind my own business, right? That's what we need to do. Sometimes the devil will try to try to sneak in that gossip, though. Hey, listen to what old so and so did down the room. I'll tell you, they did this, and then you next thing you know, you're calling your friend. Hey, listen to they did this, and that's that gossip. We're not supposed to be about that life. As Christians, we're not supposed to worry about what somebody else is doing. If we hear something bad about somebody, the first thing our thought should be is praying for them. And then don't worry about spreading that, right? And if you need to say, hey, I got a prayer request, pray for so-and-so. You don't have to go into all the details. Because that's what I've seen as well. As Christians, we like to say, hey, pray for so-and-so. This is all the things they did. You know, we like to sneak the gossip in through the thing. Hey, we got to pray for somebody. But it's still gossip. So be careful. If you want to talk about somebody, you say, hey, they're going through a hard time, pray for them. Right? Be discreet. Don't try to reveal all those things. Because would you want somebody doing that about you? You know what I mean? Think about it. Think about it as if it was you. Would I want somebody going around talking about me like this? Probably not, right? Some of the juiciest morsels, right? I don't want people going around talking about me like that. So just pray for them and mind your own business. All right? That's how to help us have a good mindset. Final scripture. Here we go. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. <clears throat> First Peter 1, 13 through 16. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Now let me just stop right there. Um, this is a phrase that we don't hear much, but to gird means to cover. All right? Loins is basically our unmentionables. Let me just say that our uh, <clears throat> private area, okay? We don't want people seeing that, so we protect that by girding it up. We clothe ourselves. He's telling us to do that with our minds as well. Protect your mind. Cover it up. Don't let it be exposed, right? So therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober, all right? For one, be sober. Be be understanding of the situation that you're in. All right? We are all called to be ambassadors of Christ. Does everybody know that? <coughs> An ambassador is supposed to go and represent a country. All right? If you have an ambassador in another country, you are representing your own country. He has called all of us to be ambassadors for Him. We represent the heavenly country. Hold on, I'll tell you, talk about it later with you, Brill. Nevertheless, an ambassador has to be on his best behavior because I'm not just representing myself anymore. I'm representing the King of Kings, right? I'm going somewhere on His behalf. I'm representing heaven, so I need to be on guard with what comes out of my mouth. I need to be sober about this situation because it's not just me by myself no more. I'm representing the king. So everywhere you go and in everything you do, be thinking about that in your mind. Everywhere you go, even at your home, even at your home, because what you do at your home is really who you are, right? So I'm going to have friends. I'm going to have family. I'm going to have kids. 
different people be coming in and out of my home, so I need to be careful what I speak. And even in your private time, when it's just you by yourself, and it's just you, you're never really by yourself because God's always there. But nevertheless, that's practice, right? Just because nobody else is in the room doesn't mean I need to start getting crazy, right? I need to continually be that righteous individual because it will be practice for me when I am around others. And then I will, I've already had this established as my behavior and it will become my character as who I am as a person and I will be better to live and serve God this way, right? That's always our motive. How can I be a better person for Him? Right? All right. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We get that grace, though. Thankfully, when we do mess up and step out of line, we got the grace of Jesus Christ. But as obedient children, we need to be obedient to God. Right? We are His kids. We need to be obedient, meaning we listen to what He says, and we do it. Not conforming yourself to the former lusts, plural, multiple lusts, all the different things that lust after sinfulness, all right? As in your ignorance. You used to do that, all right? Because you're ignorant of the truth. Now that you know the truth, you're held accountable to what you know. But as he who called you is holy, so God's holy, right? This is the kicker here. You also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Did you know that? We can be holy? I don't know about you, but whenever I came across this scripture, this was mind-blowing to me. Hold on a second. I can be holy too? Because in my mind, I always only thought the only one that could be holy is God. Right? Matter of fact, there's angels sitting around him 24-7 saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Because He is holy. But He calls us to be holy too. He says, you can be holy. You be this way. But it takes, it takes practice. It takes work. He's got it. He's got it down. But for us, it's a constant struggle. And it's a never-ending one. But it's something beautiful. If you really catch hold of this, you can be holy too. Your God is holy and He's calling you to a life of holiness. A life that is a righteousness set apart for Him and His purposes. And it's a blessing. It's a, it's a thing that you can thank Him for. That you don't have to be this thing that's in the muck. You don't have to be this thing that is in the grime. But you can be something that is holy as your God is holy. Beautiful. With light. Right? It might be hard to grasp at this moment. But when you really think about it, that's the kind of life that He's calling us to. But we have to start here. Right here. This is where it all starts, is in our minds. This is our major battlefield, is up here. And if we can get this under control, we can get this under control, we can get this under control, we can get it all under control if we can get it up here. But you have to remember those things. Especially Philippians 4.8. I can't stress that enough. Especially Philippians 4.8. Constantly and consciously be thinking about those eight things. Whatsoever is true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, or praiseworthy. Meditate on these things. Like I said, please try to commit that to memory. There's not a lot of scriptures I have committed to memory because I have access to, to, to scripture all, all over the place. And for one, I'm not a good, I'm not good at memory, for one. But that is one I have for sure said I have to remember. Because I have to constantly remind myself of this every day, all day long. Because the devil's trying to corrupt me in my mind. He's trying to corrupt you too. 
But I'm not going to let him win. Because God has given me a way to fight back, right? Thank you for the helmet of salvation, Lord. Thank you for being able to praise you. Thank you for your name. Thank you that I can conform my mind and I can renew it daily in your word and in your ways. And on that note, we can go ahead and pray. Father, thank you so much that you want us to be holy, that you've called us to be holy, that we are your ambassadors. Help guard our minds. Protect us from that devil who's trying to corrupt us, who's trying to put weeds in our garden. Help us to know how to pluck those weeds out so that we can think the proper way so that then we can speak the proper way and act the proper way as well, Father, in you. Help us to have the mind of Christ. Help us to remember that we are saved individuals and that we have the helmet of salvation on our heads. Help us to speak the name of Jesus and rebuke the devil and use Scripture to get him away from us. Father, let it be so. And we thank you right now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Or release. <laughs> this is one of those topics that I really like. It's one of those topics that are very important. So I hope y'all can remember those scriptures. You can. And it's one of those things that I can guarantee you if you remind yourself of this all day long, you're going to do what's right. You just will. <laughs> anyway, God bless y'all. I love y'all. Thank you. Love yes, you. Ma'am. I, and by the way, I don't dislike the music. I just don't understand it. Uh -huh. yeah, I mean, I can't follow it. Right, right. So, I mean. And that's understandable. <laughs> There's some I, kinds I, that I don't like either. I'm so, too old. There ain't nothing wrong with having preference. So, but I mean, I just like music. Yeah. Period. Right. But there, there is some that is really, really bad. Yeah. Oh, I know. And there is some shows on TV now that I just I know. don't even turn it on. Well, that's good. Okay. I know. They're, they're reality shows. I know. And they are vulgar. Yes. And kids like her and a little vulgar mm -hmm. is very impressionable. Right. Ooh, what is that? You and Daddy at church? <laughs> wow, you good.
go up on the stage. Yeah, I got her knee. 